What's up everybody, how's it going and welcome to this episode of Car It. Today we're picking up where we left off with our Subaru Saga with getting this motor prepped, getting the transmission on, and dropping it in the car. So first things first, we have our EJ205 out of a JDM WRX and it's sitting right behind me and we're about to get some of the servicing done. Now to answer questions about this motor, this is actually a single ADCS two liter WRX engine. It's in incredibly good shape, but we are going to go through and update things as we go along. So be prepared for an almost mighty car mod level like montage here. <laughs> oh, you are bright. Ooh, an angelic being has descended. <laughs> So, taking it right where we left off, we're actually going to go ahead and slap on the flywheel. This is our top fly, actually really nice. It's like 14 pounds, right? Mm -hmm. like, it's stupid light compared to what normally goes on it. And it fits. Perfectly. Look at that. So, we got the throw out bearing in. It's a nice fresh boy. We got brand new retaining clips for the throw out bearing. We got those fresh from a Subaru dealer. The clutch and flywheel combo is ready to go. Now we're gonna get the jack. I'm gonna prop this guy up so we can mate these two together. I went ahead off camera and did a little bit of work. We're gonna put the transmission on tomorrow, but I went ahead and pulled the stock throttle body that was on there because it was drive-by wire. We're actually gonna be converting this whole harness to a drive-by cable setup. So instead of having this huge bus plug, we're gonna be using an actual throttle cable and that requires us to take the intake manifold off so we can make sure we unplug everything and fish it all out the way we're supposed to. This will also allow us to find out how many co hoses were cut and what hoses need to just be refreshed or replaced because of the age of them, whatever they happen to be. I also lightly pulled the turbo up and out uh, I had to remove some of the oil access lines just to make it a little easier for stuff to move around in here because with the oil in place, this side of the turbo actually sticks into where the bell housing would go. So now we can actually line up the transmission perfectly and send it in place. All right. Transmission is mounted. These last two bolts are where our starter goes. We're gonna worry about that when it's time to put it in the car. Because honestly, we don't need to worry about it right now. But we do need to worry about is our slave cylinder. I do want to get our pitch top mount lined up. That way it's ready to go, it's in place. And now comes the fun part. Taking that manifold off so you can get this wiring harness out. <laughs> All right, now that the manifold is off after a lot more work than we realized it would be, we are now going to go ahead and pull this wiring harness out. We're going to pull all the clips, get them all separated out. We're also going to double check our hose kit that we got from Ishimoto, see what goes where. That way we can find out whether or not they gave us fresh parts for things like, you know, the dump pipes and all that jazz. It's been a couple of days since we picked up the camera after we got done with what we were working on with the motor. We got in touch with iWire and we started taking apart the dash because we didn't realize, stupid me, I didn't realize that I actually need to take the harness out of the dash so it can be converted over to the manual setup and more importantly can be converted so that the JDM, now soon to be USDM wiring harness, 
can be mated to my body harness without any complications or issues. So for the last few days, I've been doing a ton of research on how to get the harness out. And as you can tell, it's a mess in here. Body pieces everywhere, random bag of potatoes. It's been quite, quite the disassembly job. But unfortunately now, we're at one of the bigger steps and that's taking out the HVAC stuff so we can actually take the entire harness out of the car. There's a, uh, I'll leave a link down below. There's a really good article for anyone doing this in their older SF5 Subaru that is extremely detailed. It was on one of the Subaru forums. I'll leave that link down below so that way you guys can see for yourself how to take it all apart because it's way more detailed than I'm willing to get into right now. All I can say is it is a lot of bolts and it is a lot of nuts, so be prepared for that. But now we gotta go through here and we gotta basically take this whole crash bar out and also take out all the HVAC-ish stuff that's back that way. All right, it's been a little while. Got the bar out, got everything off. There's Torx bits in case you're doing this yourself. I don't recommend doing this yourself, but if you do do it yourself, they are size 40. That's what these guys are. They hold the, uh, the airbag mod in place. We pretty much have the bulk harness, bulkhead harness out. Uh, we just have to pull it from through the engine bay, through the wall, and then find where it disconnects from the body. That way we can actually take this whole thing, box it up, and send it off the eye wire. Once they get done with it, we'll rewire everything. It's gonna take forever, but the good news is, once it's done, it's done. While I'm getting this figured out and completed. Our freshly shaven friend here is currently working on getting the rear, not rear, the front subframe slash cross member disengaged from the rest of the car. That way we can get this NA subframe out and replace it with this very nice brand new from Subaru WRX boosted subframe. The big differences are these huge scallop marks that are in there. They make it so that the exhaust can actually be routed so you can actually route it to a turbo. And this actually clears the up pipe. So that is something we did want to prove or disprove. This clearly proves you do need a WRX subframe if you're going to boost and a car. On a scale of one to 100, how much do we not recommend doing this? Thousand. <laughs> Buy a 240 instead. <laughs> Where it's just as difficult. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. These are actually cake compared to Subaru stuff sometimes. All right, yeah, take the bulkhead harness out. It takes you a little while, but it's not too bad. It's only like three hours. Enter Mandalorian music. Oh, stop. <laughs> Holy cow. So we're gonna box this up. It's a good thing I bought that subframe today because that, that boy right there is going straight into the box the subframe came in and we're shipping it out. I also, I did a thing. I wear, I hope you see this. But I cut this, I'm gonna weld it back together with some solder when it comes back so like don't freak out. I'm pretty sure that's dome light. Probably. Because red's definitely power. Black's definitely ground most of the time. Oh, really? So, well, you, you gotta remember, ground on this was green. It's it's a beast. It's, it's heavy. It's a beast. The good news is, is there's a lot of pieces that are in this that will get deleted because we are not keeping cruise control. We're not gonna be keeping a couple of the odds and ends that came with the cruise and the automatic stuff. So And the AC and the one of them. The AC is staying. Nah. AC is staying. Nah. I am not suffering any longer without AC. Yeah, that's not your daily. That has AC, you just gotta get it fixed. I don't have money. <laughs> not this takes it all. The non-AC car takes money from my AC car so I can have a fun non-AC car. Ian's back, we had to go get some tools and bits as we usually do on these projects. Devin is here, helping us out. We're now actually gonna be doing the fuel pump array while stuff's not in the works. That way we can just throw it in there and call it a day. This is our Dietzworks 200. It's a, what, 255? Yeah. This is basically our version of an SDI pump. So this should fire and function like a stock setup. Fuel pump is out. This is the old Jank Boy versus that nice, fresh, new Deutsch Works. And it's literally a case of you versus the, the guy she tells you not to worry about. This thing is terrible compared to that. 
<laughs> fits in perfectly with the stock configuration. So we're gonna go ahead, throw it back in the car, bolt up the back end, and we're good to go. And then plugged in perfectly. This plug is actually direct fitment. Uh, it'll be a little snug because the, uh, the wire they supply you with is a little bit more loose. So just be mindful of that. Don't bend the clips when you put it together. Otherwise, you're good to go. What does it take to get to the center of a Tootsie Pop? A very big man in a small engine bay with a very big wrench. Oh, it's turning. <clears throat> it's doing a thing. So we're currently detaching the arms from the subframe. This side is putting up quite the fight. And we're hoping we can crack it loose. Because as soon as that comes out and the center jack plate comes out, we are in business. We're taking the subframe out. Ian is exactly one Forester on jack stands and the hood open tall. Plus a little extra. Taller. <laughs> Old and busted. New hotness. <laughs> I was trying to go for that 90s like, <laughs> like, agro advertising. Yeah. New and improved. <laughs> He's so crap. Yeah. <laughs> For this guy and just like that it's in a little bit of help from an old buddy what's up car ant long time no see uh we're we're in the car the trans has to get propped a little higher which is obviously normal and fine yeah. we do have to get the pitch stop put in so it'll actually sit straight on this side it's a little tight to try and get the spark plug stuff so we will have to hoist it again to put all that together it's normal that side it's real easy to get to because we deleted the whole airbox system in favor of a nice tiny little engine that's going to sit through here. So, yeah, the big hard job is done. Well, the one of two big hard jobs. You already know about the wiring monsoon that's about to happen in most likely the next episode. And then we have to cut a nice fat hole right there. Because intercooler thing. You got the jet? I don't think we need that long of one. Hopefully it'll actually, um, is it going to fit under there? Yeah. Okay. This is a little tall. But yeah, a lot of work went into this. Actually really excited and proud to see it in here. And just like that, it fits in there beautifully. Put in plenty of good efforts. So, you know, when this job is totally done, that Korean barbecue is going to be slapping. Mm. <laughs> It'll taste really good once that's done. It'll taste extra special when that's done. Yeah, you, you ain't wrong. Being swap and this being done almost near the same time. Say it ain't so. <laughs> Lots of sweaty days in the middle of August. I hope so. Yes, sir. <laughs> I'm ready for that cool weather because that thing is a sweat box. Oh, uh, no I'm, AC. Yeah, this had no AC until it died. But with us being this close, I'm very, very happy with where we're at. I'm very happy that we get to take six days off while we wait for the harness to show up because there's still other things to do I just don't want to do them right now I'm tired I'm hungry you want Chick-fil-A yeah let's get some Chick-fil-A and with that said thank you all for watching and for tuning in to our continued saga with this Forester I know we've done a lot in two episodes but it's because we had to <laughs> we need that garage space back because we got other things that are gonna be happening behind the scenes and uh yeah it's a lot of work a lot of things happening makes me happy because it means you guys got stuff to watch and content to watch and if you like what you've watched please consider subbing consider subscribing hit the like button because apparently that's what youtube wants to see now is likes versus watch time they keep changing their minds it's it's a mess Just but help us out, out please. please please we need please. we need some growth so without further ado Thank you all for watching. God bless you all. And we'll see you on the next episode. Peace.